I saw you for a second oh. and then you disappeared. Are you there? I can hear you. Uh, yes. How are you? Thank you for joining us. You're coming to us from Quito, Ecuador, is that correct? Uh, I'm close to Quito. Close to Quito, okay. And we're not showing your uh, photo, we're showing other pictures. What can you, uh, you, you are the person to talk to right now, obviously, since you are intimately uh, uh, involved, at least in terms of your knowledge of the INA paper scandal. Can you tell us from your perspective where we are right now and how we got here? The, uh, the uh, major newspapers on the early this morning on the Assange uh, uh, conspiracy to, uh, to a victim from the embassy because they probably miscalculated the, the reaction that, uh, that there, there was going to be at the international level. Now, all newspapers are, are saying that that that, that 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 this was just rumors that that he never said that, but which is a lie, because Lenin Moreno himself was talking about this for a week, so uh, that that's what it appears that they 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 never thought that there was going to be such a big reaction that they had to, from last night. Well, I don't think they knew that there would be this leak either, that somebody would tell WikiLeaks, an unnamed Ecuadorian, high-level Ecuadorian government official. They didn't know that was going to happen, did they? And do you think that that's well, what could arrange their plans? Well, actually, this, this leak started uh, almost at the at the beginning of the year. The It started they, at the beginning of the year, they showed just uh, a set of luxurious luxury apartment set, uh, setting of uh, furniture that they were that they were given to Lenin by an investment guy from one of the uh, contracts that he got from the government, and that's all they showed, and that uh, stayed for about a month. That but there was nothing. It was just a very little reaction from from the media, and that ended. And, and then the INA papers showed up about a few weeks ago. And, and that's when it, it exploded. And you see this, uh, Villavicencio is the one that is behind this. Fernando Villavicencio, the same guy of the Guardian, the Ecuadorian guy. So he, he is uh, he's closely linked to the uh, U.S. and uh, and the uh, PSC party from Guayaquil, and and behind this, uh, you see, it's there are two mega projects that this political party wants in their city, and they are worth uh, several billion. And uh, uh, Correa had already uh, started a project, which is a ref oil refinery and the uh, a container uh, shipping uh, uh, port. And he had said already where they were going to be and Lenin Moreno has not changed that. And so this political party wants those projects close to their city so that they can control the money there. So that's why they started uh, you know, uh, uh, pressuring uh, uh, Lenin Moreno and, and since uh, he hasn't backed down, you know, they just uh, show the, uh, the inner papers, uh, evidence. And, but they've been, uh, I'm sure they've known, because the, the, this uh, corruption started around 2016. But uh, when, uh, when uh, Lenin Moreno was uh, working for the UN in Geneva, so when uh, so he uh, he used his influence in government to help uh, an in, an investment guy uh, give a uh, hydroelectric uh, plant project to to this guy, and and uh, there is a, a friendship relationship between him. It's, there's a whole there are several people involved in here, and uh, even his brother Lenin's brother is involved in this. So Lenin. Well, Jose, me, up a, uh, yes, 
I just want to, before you go on with that, um, you say they they leaked these papers to that legislator in the parliament. Who's they? Who do you think gave these papers out? Could you tell us specifically? The uh, Villa Vicencio. He is the one who started uh, the uh, this whole thing. Uh, he uh, he started this around uh, about a month or so ago, um, and he was the main advisor for Lenin. Uh, he uh, he wrote to him uh, on, on social media, you know, insulting him and all sorts of sorts of things, and uh, he threatened him. He threatened uh, Villa Vicencio. And uh, sure enough, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago that uh, someone broke in uh, Villa Vicencio's office and stole all the computers. So Villa Vicencio was unhappy with Lenin Moreno because a deal he'd made with him didn't come through. Is that is well? That what I Villa Vicencio, you see, Villa Vicencio is financed by the political party in Guayaquil that wants those two big projects there. And they didn't get him. Yes, so far so, they haven't gotten. And that's why he's taken revenge on Moreno by leaking the, I, uh, exactly. the INA or INA papers to yes. the Parliament. This has nothing to do yes. with WikiLeaks or Assange. No, in fact, uh, you see, I I think I was the first to send the uh, INA papers uh, link to Unity for J site, and I think a few minutes. Uh, Maybe an hour later, a WikiLeaks uh, picked up that uh, tweet that I made to Unity for J. So, so I may have been the the person who ended up giving the links to WikiLeaks, but yeah. uh, they were public. So, yeah, yeah. so you know, so WikiLeaks didn't do anything. They just, uh, you know, uh, they retweeted, didn't do anything. Basically, they just basically retweeted the yeah. information. Yeah, I, I, yes, I tweeted to Unity for J, and then uh, he, they, I think they picked it up, and then, you know, they checked the site and then retweeted. It. Do you think that you That's will be, uh, you'll be interviewed by the Attorney General in their preliminary investigation, so that you could tell them that? Do you expect to be questioned in this? And no, because this has gotten so huge. You see, yeah. because at that time this blew up. You know, <laughs> this was a whole explosion in the social media, and, and this thing exploded. And uh, now most people in Ecuador, I think, uh, know about the Ina papers through social media, because the newspapers, the news media, have refused to uh, to you know uh, publish uh, uh, this uh, this scandal. They, the they have published little, little things, you know, you know, in page number seven, you know, hidden in a little article where nobody yeah. will see it. Yeah. But the Mexican press, you say, is, is covering this. Is that what you said? Uh, well, I sent, uh, I sent the, uh, I, I have a relationship with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with Mexico, Argentina, and Brazil. So I sent them all the, uh, the, the link to the uh, inner papers. So, so you know, they, you know, they, it takes a life of, of its own, you know, once this, one of these things explodes. So people in Ecuador can go online and read in the Mexican press or the Argentine press about yes. this, but not in their own country's yes. media. Yes. No, uh, you see, inner papers, uh, that org, uh, I don't know who finances that, but that is a site that was made for, uh, for Ecuadorians. So any Ecuadorian can go to that site and uh, and look at the evidence. Now, do you think there are people in the Ecuadorian government? Well, there, there seem to be at least two who do not want to see Assange being uh, expelled. And they are the ones who leaked that information to WikiLeaks. So there's some hope that there are people with a conscience inside the Ecuadorian government, if not in the embassy itself. Is that correct? Well, as you know, the, they changed the personnel at the uh, uh, at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. So, so I don't know, uh, you know, what their views is, but what I have read, uh, you know, they are called uh, on the, on Assange. Yeah. And, and 
and you know, you have to realize that these these jobs are high paying jobs for an Ecuadorian. So so they want to keep their jobs, you know. So so they'll do whatever the ambassador or merchant tells them to do. But somebody uh, talked to WikiLeaks and told them that uh, this is imminent, the expulsion of Assange. So those are two brave people in the Ecuadorian government. Yes. Yes. Well, you see, that's what I was saying. Uh, the, they did not, ex uh, Lenin Moreno and his people did not, ex did not expect the, the, uh, the huge amount of support that Assange was getting at the international level. And, and they didn't realize that now the INA papers is becoming well-known in other countries, which is something that they did not want to do, you see? It's, uh, I think that they didn't uh, think about that, you see? They just, so that's why this morning, early this morning, they back down. They are backing down. That's good news. Yes. They thought it would be just a local issue and it would not exactly. become internationalized. But, but it exploded. I'm, I'm showing the, uh, the, uh, the new, one of the main newspapers in the capital. It says very clearly that the imminent exit of Julian Assange is only rumors. Unfounded, yeah. Rumors. yeah. Yes. It but says the, the uh, yes. So, you know, and, and the other paper is that says the same thing. It's rumors, yeah. you see? Yeah. So there you have it. <laughs> so it just, so, so they, they never thought about the INA papers being exposed at the international level. Well, so, that's, they have Julian Assange to thank for that in a way, which is why exactly. they, they consider him a headache because if uh, they don't know how to deal with this issue clearly, uh, and if uh, that's one reason they may want to clean their hands of this problem, because yes. now this uh, local scandal has become a worldwide issue, and wouldn't have exactly. without Julian being there. So yeah, uh, so so I'm going to translate the uh, the Ina papers. Uh, I'm going to start ah, translating them and well, putting them. In the, uh, yes, yes, but uh, this time yeah. I'm going to put it on the on the. Uh, I'm going to try if, if they. Uh, want the inapapers.org guys uh, to let me put the translation there. So and now, we, so we, that now we, we know why you don't want your face to be shown on this vigil. I think it's very wise. Uh, right. <laughs> yes, Ray. Yeah, uh, I'd like to just clarify what we were talking yes. about, about the, the crucial timeline here, about uh, when the DNC discovered that it had been hacked when they employed CrowdStrike and how long it took CrowdStrike to shut the system down as any reputable uh, computer service would have done. Uh, here's what I should read raymcgovern.com every day because this is what I myself wrote just three days ago. Okay. The DNC CEO, her name was Amy Dacey, she learned that the DNC had been breached, the computer system, in late April 2016, and that most of the emails that were, that were released came after that. So she learned in late April, and what did she do? Well, she the CEO of the DNC and Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman, who had to leave after this was all exposed, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they decided not to call in the FBI. And instead, about five days after the hack, they enlisted CrowdStrike. Okay, now, CrowdStrike implanted itself on May 5th within a day of being asked, so it was ready. Now, in the intervening days, 5,800 new emails were written and captured. So the bottom line here is that between May 5th, when CrowdStrike came on the scene and did nothing, between May 5th and May 25th, that's where all the 
DNC emails and questions were released, were hacked or released, or, or as we think, copied onto a thumb drive after CrowdStrike has been brought in to respond. So the whole thing is very murky, but we do have the dates. Late April, discovered. 5th of May, CrowdStrike on the job. And between the 5th of May and the 25th of May, which includes these very damaging, damaging uh, emails that were released eventually by WikiLeaks, CrowdStrike didn't do a thing. And so that raises the whole question about what's going on here. But at least we have the chronology. The chronology is not speculation. It's right here in the can, data. So can you find out, Ray, when the um, when GPS Fusion was hired by the DNC through their lawyer to hire Steele to start linking Trump to Russia? I believe it was before they knew that they had uh, their emails had been, been compromised. In other words, they were trying to set up a link between Russia and Trump as colluding before they even knew the emails were taken from them, which really is an interesting point there. Yeah, they, they wouldn't, uh, yeah. That I don't know the exact answer to that, and I've got to leave right now, but that is yeah. knowable. And uh, yeah, we'll find that out. Yeah. In other words, they I, fit I, the I, facts, they, they fit the facts to their theory that yeah. they were trying to smear Trump from the beginning as a campaign tactic, that he was tied to Russia the way H.W. Bush tried to blame Bill Clinton in that debate for having been a student and gone to Moscow for a while. You know, that's in a long tradition in American politics, yeah, linking and, your opponent to Russia. Yeah, and in this context, with having to do with Julian, uh, one has to remember that it was MI6, the British. Uh, who has liaison with MI6? Only CIA, okay? CIA has liaison with MI6. So if, if John Brennan, the head of the CIA, wanted help from the British uh, in, the, term, in, the, in the, the form of a dossier, on Trump, well, all he had to do is ask his good friends there in Britain, who, as they did on Iraq, before Iraq, composed a dossier out of whole cloth and helped, uh, helped what Brennan wanted to do. So it's not a stretch to think this is the way it went down. Yeah. And I would suggest that uh, over the next couple of months, it's gonna be a real crucible. The crucible is this. The data is available. The Department of Justice has some of it. The FBI has some of it. The FISA court has some of it. Now, Trump has recently boasted that he is going to release it all. Well, let's see. Yeah. If he does, I'll be surprised because he's always bowed to the deep state up till now. Right. And that is main problems. With after that happy he, note. After he I'm releases gonna, that, he released the JFK assassination files. <laughs> right. All right, Ray. Syria, and he pull out Afghanistan, and they do right, 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 and out of Syria and all the other things he promised. Thank yeah. you very much, Ray, for joining us today. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Okay, bye bye. Now mm -hmm. we'll go back to Jose. Jose, you're still with us? Yes. Sir. So, um, you don't expect then an imminent expulsion of Julian Assange from the embassy? Where do they stand on that? We're back to square one, essentially. Yes. I think the, I think that one or two uh, uh, you know heads uh, at, at the presidential palace are going to roll down the, the stairs <laughs> with this uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure yeah because because the you know Lenin is paying a big uh, uh, price for you know for a really uh, badly planned uh, uh, you know, media show that they, they, they didn't think about. Now, this, this week has been disastrous for Lenin Moreno because three days ago, he had an interview and there he incriminated himself and his brother. He blamed his brother for having created the, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, investment uh, staff or in our papers. So, <laughs> So it's incredible, you know, he, he, he can go to jail just with that uh, interview that he gave. Yeah, because will he though? Will he, will he yes. go to jail? What do you think? Right, well, <laughs> right now at, at the moment, no. 
what uh, what I'm speculating, I think this was all set up, you see, uh, to mm -hmm. be this way. Uh, the, the, the current vice president right now, which is the third vice president, is from the PSC party, which is the party that wants those two projects in their city. Now, the I think they're going to keep pushing uh, Lenin until he resigns because they want their man as president. Because according to the Constitution, uh, the vice president would become president if Lenin Moreno leaves for some reason. Now, the Lenin Moreno would leave uh, uh, with uh, with the uh, condition that he can, that he will not be uh, uh, persecuted, you know, in uh, in court for the corruption right. uh, scandal. Right. I think he's, I think he's going to exchange that for his freedom. Right. Yeah. For his, uh, for his resignation. Do you think, as Ray McGovern speculated before you came on, that he may be getting? Uh, part of the deal that he wants to get for Assange would be that he gets to have asylum in himself inside the United States. Maybe a nice uh, villa in Florida is what Ray was suggesting. Right. He well, he, Ecuador, right? Yeah. he would have to leave Ecuador. Well, the uh, you see, one of the apartments that they uh, purchased uh, from the corrupt money was uh, is in uh, located in uh, Spain. And uh -huh. he has been having he has been having a lot of contacts with the Spain, so uh, you know I don't know uh, if if Spain uh, will uh, will you know give him a, you know the asylum. But that would also explain why he moved after Julian was tweeting feverishly about the Catalan independence movement in support of that against Madrid. It was after, it was really that was the trigger to the so-called protocol in which they shut down his access to Twitter and all social media and shut him up. And uh, it was Spain. Moreno mentioned that he's yes. been insulting Spain and the U.S. Yes. So that, that has so, something to do with it, maybe, right? His relationship. Yeah. So that's a that's relationship. a favor that uh, Spain owes uh, to Lenin. <laughs> right. Well. So maybe he's going to cash it in for that uh, that to live in that house. Exactly, or or in another house because he's got so many so much money now that he can live anywhere. Well, would he have really? to forfeit some of the money if he got it uh, through nefarious means through, in this scandal? Because, you think, some money. Yeah, there are a few millions uh, hidden in uh, in uh, you know in 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 the Bahamas or somewhere else, you know, uh, and uh, so he I'm sure he has plenty of money to live off uh, very well. Now he, uh, when do you think this might happen that he will leave office? Well, I don't see Lenin holding on any longer uh, because, well, you know, the the uh, fiscal attorney, the new fiscal attorney that was named, is is chosen by him, and you know she could uh, say that you know the. Take the investigation of his corruption and and you know make it uh, long you know to take a long time until he leaves. So so uh, he uh, so but she is under a lot of pressure because according to the law she does not qualify for the for the position. So in other and, words, his downfall is imminent within. Hours or days? Yes, yes, <laughs> I think so because because you see in the, in the interview he he seemed uh, to be very shaken, you know, emotionally uh -huh. with all the yes. And Julian uh, he, remains he, in the embassy. Yes, uh, this has uh, shaken him uh, tremendously because the pictures of his family are all over the social media, and and uh, so I mean intimate pictures, you know, and uh, what he, do you mean? this has. Uh, Intimate? Well, what I mean, you know, yeah, videos of him, uh, you know, dancing in, inside the uh, Geneva apartment with all uh -huh. the luxury, 
there is Actually. one picture where yeah there is one picture where he he looks like a caesar of rome you know uh eating a, a lobster well wait a minute I, how could he dance if he's in a wheelchair isn't he in a wheelchair well i mean they they uh, show the party in his apartment in Geneva, and all the women, uh, his daughters, his wife, and some other uh, uh, persons that are there, uh, are in, in a party that they threw out. So, yeah, and it looks uh, very luxurious. Now, these pictures are the ones that he claims were hacked by yes, WikiLeaks? from his cell phone. And the only guy who could do that is Fernando Villavicencio, the guy from The <laughs> Guardian. Uh, how, why do you say that? Why do you say he's the only guy? Because you see, Fernando Villavicencio hacked the, the cell phone numbers for the the phone numbers, telephones for when Correa was president. He, he hacked Correa's telephone and some of the ministers. And Correa put him in jail. And, and, and Villavicencio escaped to Miami. He escaped from jail and went to Miami? Yes, yes. He escaped, and uh, he, I think he, he was given uh, some time. I don't remember how he escaped, but he, uh, he was being, uh, he had uh, uh, an alert on the Interpol. So he was, but he went to Miami without any problem. Of course. And I'm sure he received a, a good, uh, uh, you know, course in, uh, you know, in, in hiding <laughs> by the CIA. Yeah, who, so, who gave so, him the course in hacking? Yeah, so so Villa Vicencio a has a long history of electronic hacking, uh, spying. Yes. And you think, therefore, he's the one who got the photographs from Moreno yes. because he wanted to put Moreno down because he didn't get the project in his area. Exactly. Yes, exactly. He, because he started putting the pictures. And again, WikiLeaks is blamed. This is a default position. Yeah. I mean, it's absurd because WikiLeaks has nothing to do with the, with the inner papers that org site has nothing to do with it. Or with these photographs and these no. uh, intimate videos or whatnot. Yeah, all these pictures and videos are, are, are you can see them in the inner papers uh, uh, site. So, so you know, but yeah, this backfired on the name for sure. <laughs> no now, question. if he leaves, if he leaves, the vice president becomes president, and he's from Valavienza's Vel yeah. party. Is that what you said? Exactly. Yes, he yeah. is. He belongs to the party that uh, that wants uh, a Sanch out. The vice president does. Yes, Otto. He is. Uh, he has a German descent. Mm. I think his father is German. So Otto here would want him out, uh, Assange out even more than Moreno. Is what exactly you're because yes, they have been uh, they they have been asking uh, for. Remember that uh, a National Assembly representative that made uh, some scandal uh, 2017 that she wanted to uh, to uh, discover the uh, papers uh, for. Uh, Assange's asylum and uh, citizenship. She is the one that uh, that that started uh, this whole thing. But but of course she's been told uh, you know what to do, and she is for from the same party as Otto, which is the PSC. P as in Paul, S as in Sam, and uh, C as in Christian. Partido Social Cristiano. Okay, the social. Christian Socialist Party. They're neither socialist or Christian, I would imagine, but that's the name no, of the party. Um, yes. Now, uh, that's that's not good news. What you're telling us, then, so that if Moreno falls, what, do you think that this new president Otto would be acting quickly on Assange, and he wouldn't care about uh, how it looks in terms of international law to expel someone that the government gave asylum to, a citizen of Ecuador? Uh, do you think that he would also not want to get something in return from the U.S.? Because as the New York Times reported in December, Marina was negotiating with the U.S. to get something in return for Assange. So how do you think Otto would uh, approach that? Would he want something in return? It seems like he would. Any well, politician yes, would, because, right? 
Yes, he, he because this this guy is actually a you know a young guy who's never been in politics. <laughs> I mean, he he's just going to be a, a you know a president you know that is going to be directed by other people because he doesn't know nothing about politics. And who are the other people who are going to direct him? His uh, his party is, uh, you know, all all uh, you know wolves, you know, all jackals that were all, always friendly to the United States. In other words, if Moreno uh, goes down, uh, the situation gets worse for Julian Assange. That's what you're saying. It is possible, yes, because the, the way they they started asking for, you know saying the you know that the uh, citizenship was uh, illegal for Assange yeah and that, that is the start point you know oh that was the party that brought that up do you think that Moreno may have tried to get Assange out now uh in order to try to save himself or that would not work that would not have worked they still want him well, because of the corruption. well this morning I uh, I think uh, this morning uh you know that he backed down uh and as you saw the newspaper articles uh, uh, you know he he's backing down, but but you know Lenny Moreno is very tricky. You never know what he's going to do, and in Ecuador we know very well the type of evil that this guy is. He strikes in the at the last moment that you don't even expect it. So so he backed down now. So now the today. The, all the uh, government, main government uh, officials have been completely quiet. I am sure that they are meeting to, to see what they are going to do next. They are going to, you know, see what they have on the table, you know. So I'm sure we will we'll know something uh, by, by tomorrow. But you, but you, you don't think uh, that if he got rid of Assange's problem, that that would save him. In other words, those that party, mm -hmm. PSC, want, they still want power. So they would, even if he gave up Assange now, uh, they still, they wouldn't back down, right? Because they want to get to power and they have this INA scandal to, to use as a way to get him out. Yes, because you see the Assange uh, media show has nothing to do with the, his corruption scandal. Right. So the let's suppo let's suppose that he evicts Assange. That that eviction will last maybe one two days and that's it. But you the mean in the newspaper? Scandal, in the newspaper. Yes, yeah. Yes, and the corruption scandal is gonna look be in the in the uh, in the social media uh, for many days because right now e almost every day there is a new leak. On Ina papers and a new corruption scheme. It's interesting. Is the, uh, anybody from the PSC party saying publicly that it was not WikiLeaks that did this? Uh, no, because they don't want to be obvious. Yeah, you see, they, they are behind this. They they are they don't want to be obvious. But right. one clue one clue to this is that yesterday Lenin Moreno called for a meeting to all new mayors that won the elections. And the and the mayor of the city of Guayaquil, where the PSC party is, she won the elections as mayor. She did not show up or did not uh, write to Lenin, sorry, I can't have nothing. She just, she didn't show up. And she's from the PSC and, as well, obviously. Yes, and also about four or five days ago, last week, uh, one of the legislators from the PSC uh, did not uh, uh, support the investigation at the National Assembly uh, for the corruption scandal uh, against Lenin. So they gave the support. The PSC supported the investigation last week. So mm -hmm. that's another cue. What about the public in Ecuador? What are they saying? What are, do they uh, do they care about what's going on? And how much do they care? Do we know? 
what the public reaction is to all of this? Well, you know, the, the economy right now is, is not uh, do, too well because uh, Lenin Moreno has destroyed the Ecuadorian economy and, and continues to do so. So, the, you know, the, we, the, this, this is the, one of the most uh, uh, important things. Rafael Correa left the Ecuadorian uh, people uh, accustomed to democracy. And Lenin Moreno has brought us back to corruption and uh, and 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 you know and all that is all but democracy. Yeah, and repression and control of the press and that kind of thing. Yes. yes. When is the next scheduled election, presidential election in Ecuador? Well, in in uh, four years, in two thousand. It was in 2017, it would be 2021, the new president would take in over. Unless, <laughs> unless the people rise and throw all that mafia that is in the government right now out, all of them, hmm. which, uh, which uh, we have done, uh, we have done that before. So, we we called uh, for a general strike in in at the presidential palace on Monday. So so we what's the we, what's the response to that? that's why I was asking about the public response to all this. Right. So we will see on Monday what what happens. Oh, Probably, you're going to do it on Monday. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, on Monday, this coming Monday. So we don't know. But probably, you know, Lenin Moreno is going to order to block you know, the streets uh, close to the, close to the, uh, to the presidential palace. And that could um, cause some trouble in the streets then if they try to get through. Um, right. We don't, you don't know, you can't predict how the public will react to this call for a strike. Exactly. But, but we have, did... mm -hmm. right, go ahead. No, I was gonna, uh, go on, please. Karen, what were you going to say? Yeah, we have thrown out uh, several presidents already. The people have thrown them out. So this would not be the last, I guess. Mm, <laughs> mm. do it. Well, that's, that's encouraging. Now, um, I, I thought I saw that, I may be wrong, some articles that Correa could make a comeback. Well, yes, what was that he, about? He did say that he was going to come back, but. Uh, the way if if uh, Lenin Moreno is still in power, uh, I don't think he can he cannot uh, come back because he will be arrested immediately. But he can't become president. Could he be run again in 2021? According no, he cannot. Uh, he cannot. I, I think he, no. I think he can run a, as a representative for the National Assembly and vice president. I'm not sure. But for yeah. the National Assembly, yes, he can. But if you realize Le Rafael Correa has raised so much hell from using his cell phone, can you imagine yeah. him being here? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, but he's, is he under uh, some kind of suspicion of corruption himself? I mean, would they be able to arrest him for something if he came back? Well, Yes, he has 24 accusations at the uh, uh, for mismanagement and corruption, but none of those have been proven. So he has so far 24 accusations. So we are doing that to keep him out of the country. That's all. That's the only reason. That's why he's out of the country now. I see. So yes, if um, um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, this, uh, this morning Rafael Correa tweeted uh, uh, in English uh, about Assange. Did you see that video? No, I did not. No. I see. It's, it's a video. Yes. Yes, in I English. tweeted also about that. Uh, yes, in English. Yes, he said that uh, Molin Moreno cannot uh, evict Assange because he is an Ecuadorian citizen. Aha. Uh -huh. And it would be unconstitutional. That, that's what he said. Julian Assange is Ecuadorian, and Lenin Moreno cannot remove him from the embassy.
because he is an Ecuadorian citizen. Here we go. I think uh, uh, it was about five hours ago that you posted that. Yeah, in the morning. 26, in the morning. 26 uh, minutes, 26 second video. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it's a short video. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show it now. Uh, let's play that. So I'll share the screen. It's uh, this one here. And here we go. Yeah, that's it. About Julian Assange's future. But uh, the Ecuadorian government must protect Julian Assange. I repeat, there is no choice. Julian Assange is Ecuadorian citizen. He has the Ecuadorian citizenship. So according to our constitution, he cannot be extradited to the United States or wherever. I see. Well, that's an interesting statement. Unfortunately, he's not in power, but um, yeah. he's he's right about that, isn't he? Yes, yes. But that won't yes. stop them from doing it. Well, well I mean, uh, Assange's lawyers could clearly challenge that uh, extradition by arguing yes. about Ecuadorian law inside Ecuador, right. maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the uh, Poveda, the uh, the Assange, uh, Assange's uh, Ecuadorian lawyer, said uh, uh, about four or five days ago that uh, if if that if they had, if they were attempt to do that uh, to evict Assange, they have the recourse of going to the OAS uh, CIDH uh, court to get a uh, a protection uh, appeal that would uh, have an immediate uh, uh, execution. Because you see the, the CIDH already ruled that Ecuador cannot evict Assange. They already told the Ecuadorian government that they cannot evict him. This is what the uh, international... Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the OAS, you know, the Human Rights Court, yeah, right. That's what the ruling was. Yeah. So that was a very important ruling, you know. So right, but I don't believe it's binding on Ecuador. Is that right? Well, it's not uh, no, binding. no, no, it is not binding. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, but it's, it's important just, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, of course, it's important. Yes, and, and also the. Rapporteur for the UN will be visiting uh, uh, Assange uh, sometime this month. April 25th, April 25th, yes. yeah. yes. 20 days and, from uh, now. And Lenin Moreno is, is going to Washington uh, this month, I think on the 15th or 16th, uh -huh. to, re to receive orders from Trump. <laughs> He's going uh -huh. there to... To, to, you know, ask, hey, please, Trump, let, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, but he's also going to say, give me something in return for Assange, won't he? Or at this, at this <laughs> well, point, maybe, yeah. yes. maybe his demands are weakened because he's in so much trouble. Um, yes. He's not in a good uh, negotiating no. position right now, is he? Oh, he is not at all. I mean, the, Trump can eat him alive easily without <laughs> asking anything. Well, I'm not afraid of Trump so much as Pompeo and Haspel. Um, I think they're the ones crawling the shots on Assange right now. I mean, uh, right. Trump's not to lunch on this, it seems like. Yes. yes. And Bolton, Bolton, he'll probably meet all three of those. Um, hmm. Now, let, let me ask you something. Please. Would, uh, would the uh, Assange extradition be helpful to Trump in a me in a new media campaign. You mean for his twenty twenty reelection campaign? Yes, it's a good question. I would think that uh, if uh, he's kind of out of the woods when it comes to the Russian collusion issue, he's already been given a big gift by Robert Mueller, who could not come up with the evidence to prove that Russia had colluded with the Trump campaign to steal that election. So I don't think he needs Assange as much as maybe he would have previously. Uh, 
But, uh, you know, Trump's into it for himself, obviously. And if he thought that that would help him in any way to even uh, underscore further that he was not in league with Russians, he was not involved in any way with the WikiLeaks thing, because there are people who are clinging to this collusion theory, uh, especially in the media, because they were proven so wrong and they look so bad right now that they're looking for ways to come out uh, ahead. In fact, the New York Times and the Washington Post yesterday on on a Thursday, both had articles quoting unnamed sources inside Mueller's investigative team saying that Bob Baer, the uh, William Baer, rather, the um, attorney general has, in fact, not portrayed the Mueller report accurately. Uh, but it has to do more, it seems, with the obstruction of justice side of this rather than the collusion side. But we're going to probably get that full report anyway, redacted with the assistance of Robert Mueller. Uh, will help Barr to redact that. So I think Trump's feeling pretty good right now, and he doesn't need Assange, but uh, it won't hurt him. Uh, I think that that's my answer. I think it's these people in the security agencies that want him more than Trump does. Want I, think, uh, I think the Democratic Party wants to score points by... Uh, by making uh, you know their own interpretation of the uh, of the Mueller report, don't you think? Oh, of course, they're doing everything they can to to twist this to to spin it in a way that uh, keeps their argument alive. But right now, they've been dealt a fatal blow that there was no collusion. But as Ray pointed out, Ray McGovern earlier, they're still saying that Russia hacked the emails and Russia's a threat to our democracy. Blah blah blah. Not. Uh, not our own uh, threat to democracy from oligarchs, from corruption that we own, we have on our own, our own divisions in our society between rich and poor, between black and white. This has nothing to do with Russia, um, but they're going to continue down that line. It's they thought it was a winning strategy, and I think they're going to continue with that. But uh, they certainly want Assange. There's no question about that. The Democrats do. Um, yes. It's uh, there was some uh, mainstream media reporting of this story and CNN and elsewhere um, about the story being that there was an imminent expulsion coming, but now I think we could um, we could take a deep breath now and realize that he's not going anywhere anywhere soon in your opinion right? But if Moreno goes down and right. we have a new government with the vice president at the head of it, then the pressure would would mount again on Assange. Yes. <clears throat> no, yes, that's uh, that's a danger, you know. Uh, it, it occurred to me. Don't you think that the uh, that the uh, pro uh, that the people who want who want to keep pushing uh, the the Russian uh, 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 gate investigation will join with uh, Democrats that want to uh, 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 you know score points. Can you repeat that, um, Jose? Yes, because you see, we have two sides on the, on the Russia Gate investigation. There is one side that wants to keep the show going, right? Yes. And the Democrats also want to sc score points on 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 this. Don't you don't you think that they could uh, the two go work together? Yes. Yes, I think, as I said, the, this Russia story is something they've been using since, uh, I think, before they even knew their computers were uh, compromised at the DNC. And then after uh, the election, they immediately started blaming Russia for uh, having stolen the election from them. And then that got swept up into this intelligence community assessment. And then the media took off. And then we got Mueller appointed, and we had two and a half years of hell in this country, uh, unbelievable partisan strife over this issue that has just landed as a dud when last weekend uh, Mueller concluded that there, has, there was no evidence of collusion. So I don't think they're going to let it die. No, I think they're going to keep it going. And of course, there's the two aspects of that story that are still <coughs> pending, and that was whether Russia, in fact, hacked these emails and whether they gave it to WikiLeaks. And that's what Mueller said in his indictment of the GRU agents in Russia, the Russian military intelligence agents, that they had, they were Gustav II, 
and that they stole the emails and they passed them over to WikiLeaks. And uh, no one in Assange's, sorry, in Mueller's investigation team ever tried to contact Julian Assange to interview him, which is quite curious if in fact that was part of his investigation, which it clearly was. In fact, it came out in that indictment and that indictment was made and organization one is WikiLeaks in that indictment. They are not indicted, but they are sort of un, uh, unindicted co-conspirators, but not named except as organization one. But even in the preparation of that indictment, there was no contact made with Julian Assange in the embassy and they certainly know where he is. So they could have found him if they wanted to talk to him uh, and that did not happen. So I think this story is not over though, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, they will try to make what they can out of it. But uh, it seems what you're saying is that uh, we have something really to worry about if Marino goes and this new government takes over, that they want Assange even more than uh, Moreno does. And that's troubling. Yes, it is. Well, we will just have to wait and see what happens. But uh, that seems to be the uh, road uh, to, uh, you know, that is going right now. So yes. the, next day, the next days are crucial. And um, you think he could be gone by Monday? Uh, well, the, remember that I had uh, commented on, on several visuals before that there were rumors that he would leave. Um, and, uh, and those rumors are, you know, are getting, uh, you know, uh, are getting louder now. And they, Rafael Correa tweeted already about last week that uh, he had the information that Lenín Moreno was going to leave Ecuador, uh, saying that he needed a medical, uh, uh, you know, medical, expertise in, uh, in Spain. And uh, he was going to ask uh, permission to leave the country based on health reasons. That's what uh, Rafael Correa yeah. tweeted. And, uh, and uh, uh, so that's where we are now. So the rumors uh, that were started a few months ago, you know, they're beginning to, to make more sense now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we will see the departure of Moreno and a new guy who uh, who seems to want Assange even more. That's not good. Yes. Um, Jose, yeah, anything you could add to what you've been telling us in terms of uh, this developing story? Um, well, you know, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, the support that Assange got today is very important because, uh, you know, you know, it has caused a backlash here in Ecuador against uh, Lenin Moreno. So, so his uh, his media show trying to use uh, Sanchez as a cover for to hide his corruption did not uh, go well for him. So, no, it backfired. Yeah. Yes, but I tell you, he had he would not have backfired if the people had not supported the Sanchez. It was very important what uh, what the support uh, was given, you know, from last night until uh, today. Very important. The people in Ecuador as well. Was there any manifestation of their support for Assange? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, last night, as soon as I I I got the news from WikiLeaks, I tweeted all uh, all our leaders and uh, all the uh, main uh, social media people in our party. So they they have tweeted about it today. So so people got to know more Assange this time. Well, that's an interesting question. What is uh, has there ever been any uh, polls done about what the Ecuadorian people feel about Julian Assange, or that that wouldn't no. be allowed? No. No, there, no, there hasn't been because the political, you know, uh, scandals have been continuous. Since he Lenin started, the political scandals have been continuous. He had used that as a uh, as an strategy to cause an scandal and behind that scandal do, you know, some horrendous things. So people never knew what happened. 
because all the media was focused on, on a scandal that he created. Right. Hmm. Okay, Jose, it was very good to talk to you. Um, if you want to stay on, we're going to, I think we're going to switch to a video of the live video outside the embassy that the feed from Rupley, is that correct? Mm, I could also put it up myself here. We're talking to you and I have to live now. Yes, Jose, thank you very much again for joining us and giving us some great insights into what's happening at the, uh, uh, at, uh, in Ecuador right now. So I'm going to share this. Okay. Okay. I think we got it up already. Okay. We are now watching the outside of the embassy uh, in London. Julian Assange. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Please join us again sometime. Okay. okay. Bye bye. <laughs>